youngest guy to make a Cubs big league debut since Oscar Gamble in August of 19. He'll go down and the Cubs leave another man in scoring position. And now Castro and he bangs one through for a base hit. Starlin Castro with his first hit of the postseason. And the Cubs have a man on to start the second inning. Guys, it's no secret that the Cubs need Bryant, Rizzo, and Castro in the middle of their order to do some damage in this series. Not just this series, but if they advance. They've got to have those three guys clicking. We can talk about the rookies and the contributions they make uh, outside of Bryant, like Schwarber. Bullpen game. I thought maybe that was skewed toward the Cubs with Kyle Hendricks making his first career start. Castro with a hit and run on. That's a base hit to right. And Rizzo never slowing down on his way to third. The Cubs execute the hit and run to perfection. First and third with nobody out in the third inning. You know you're going to get a fastball. It's a perfect time to do it. He can't throw strikes. He's trying to throw right down the middle. Yeah. He's trying to throw a strike. And he did get a perfect one to go to right field on. That's classic. A guy Rizzo doesn't run all that well, but. He could have walked into third. Castro doing a nice bit of hitting right there. Hit the ball the other way. Castro has been a great hitter in this game at times. Matter of fact, he led the national game break. Let's check in with Casey Stern. He is in our Atlanta studio. What do you have, Case? All right, Casey, thanks. Looking forward to that matchup. And that, of course, is the big news of the postseason thus far. As Stalin Castro, he will watch this one fly way out of here. Castro ties it up at two. Tell you what, you'd be flipping a breaking ball over to get over for strike one, which they have. I don't know if he's sitting on it, but I'll tell you what, a little bit out front, stayed back enough to drive this ball a long, long ways. Hit it high and watch it fly tonight. Ball is jumping. All this talk about the pitchers, specifically Arietta. First game, they were a weird club. They led the league in strikeouts as hitters and they led the league in walks and that was the first combination of those categories since the 78 Cincinnati Reds and a big home run hitting club as well as Castro delivers to right a single Starlin Castro is hitting well one of the great things about Wrigley Field is the seventh inning stretch and take me out to the ball game and normally those who occupy this booth and the target clearly was up trying to back him off maybe set him up for a change of away he got hit 30 times in the regular season the most in baseball and he has a lead at first hit on the button to center field Lagaris is back and it's over his head Castro's going to have extra bases they are going to wave Rizzo the throw to the plate is high and late, and the game is tied. Well, that's a case of the swirling winds. Got Lagaris right there. He misjudged that ball right off the bat and never could recover. He put a charge in this one, though. Good backspin on it. Carries over Lagaris' head. Well, the Cubs had not had a base runner coming into the fifth. That changed with the hit batsman. They had not had a hit. That changes with the Castro double, and now they're on the board, and it's a 1-1 game. It's amazing how fast things can change. You have the count up on Rizzo. You decide to come up and in. You hit him, and the next thing you know, the game's tied. That's how explosive this Cubs team can be. Castro with his lead at second. Here's 
I think he wished he would have mixed the three two change up instead of throwing the fastball to Schwarber. On the ground into left field base hit. Third base hit here in the first off the ground. And they're at first and second for Jorge Soler. Well, right there, Darno was calling for the ball in. DeGrom missed right down the middle. And that's why they produced this hit. Just missing his spots. Good top spin. He's missed up. He's missed down. Doesn't have his 